8. Gray Spoonamore In a bizarre yet entertaining traffic stop that was captured on camera in April 2023, a self-proclaimed exotic dancer tried using feminine charm to get out of an arrest in Brunswick, Ohio, after she rear-ended another car. The ordeal began when 20-year-old Gray Spoonamore's Buick Enclave slammed into a Chevy sedan, prompting an officer nearby to chase after her. The cop learned that Spoonamore's vehicle was flagged for several felony warrants. According to police, the young woman attempted to flee, but was cornered by the officer's vehicle. Spoonamore seemed disoriented, and the arresting officer immediately noticed other telltale signs of intoxication, including slurred speech and bloodshot eyes. When the officer asked Spoonamore if she had anything illegal on her, she giggled and said, I don't know, search me. She initially denied driving drunk, but eventually admitted to drinking two or three doubles of tequila at a friend's house before getting behind the wheel. Spoonamore acted flirtatious toward the cop at first, but she switched up her strategy and copped an attitude when she realized that flattery was getting her nowhere. She refused to give the cop her address and accused him of being a bouncer at a strip club she claimed to work at. When the officer said he didn't know what Spoonamore was talking about, she told him to quit playing dumb. The young woman became increasingly combative, allegedly spitting on a backup officer and threatening to urinate in the cop's face. She wet her pants in the back of the cruiser on the way to the police station where she was booked on charges of operating a vehicle under the influence, speeding, obstruction of official business, and assaulting a police officer. 7. Parking lot catfight goes viral In June of 2016, footage of two scantily clad exotic dancers fighting in a parking lot went viral on social media. Nobody seemed to know where the incident occurred or why the confrontation turned violent, but an onlooker could be heard saying that the women were arguing over payment for a dancing job shortly before the brawl broke out. Bystanders shouted at the women to stop fighting while one of the dancers, who was pinned to the ground, pleaded with witnesses for help. The scrapping continued even after the woman on the ground lost all her clothing in the struggle, leaving her naked and fending for herself on the pavement. The footage went viral, and there was no shortage of commenters who criticized onlookers for continuing to film the fight, rather than putting their phones down and coming to the losing party's aid. The circumstances surrounding the catfight remain a mystery to this day, and it's unclear whether the police got involved or if any arrests were made. 6. Yvonne McDermott and Cheryl Hanrahan an exotic dancer from the English town of Bournemouth was scarred for life after being attacked by a rival dancer in August 2018. 45-year-old Cheryl Hanrahan and 36-year-old Yvonne McDermott were once friends, but a falling out had turned them into bitter enemies. During the incident in question, the women crossed paths at a gentleman's club called Wiggle, where Hanrahan was working at the time. After finishing up on stage, Hanrahan sat down near McDermott and they immediately began to exchange words. McDermott allegedly called Hanrahan a glass-eyed prostitute and struck the victim in the face with a plastic jug, leaving her with a permanent scar. In early 2021, a jury found McDermott guilty of causing actual bodily harm. She narrowly avoided jail time due to having a special needs child who requires a stable routine and was handed a 14-month suspended sentence. While handing down the punishment, the judge made it clear that he was disgusted by McDermott's apparent lack of remorse for her crimes. So he imposed strict conditions, including a daily curfew, and warned McDermott that she'd finish her sentence in prison if she got in any trouble over the next two years. 5. Jessica Tackett when a retired businessman from Michigan named Paul Vagnozzi was told that he'd slept with an underage woman who he thought was legal, he panicked. The former software executive would have never knowingly done something like that, and he was now facing threats from people claiming to be the woman's mafia-connected relatives. Vagnozzi would later learn that the woman was, in fact, of legal age, 
and that he was the victim of a sick extortion plot concocted by a family of alleged career scammers. The nightmare began back in 2008, when Vegnozzi began paying a stripper named Jessica Tackett and her cousin for intimacy. Later that year, his harassers began bombarding him with phone calls and letters, claiming to be relatives of the women with connections to the criminal underworld. They demanded hush money in exchange for not going to the police, and also threatened to have gang members physically harm Vegnozzi if he didn't pay up. The calls became increasingly frequent and aggressive over time, but Vegnozzi was afraid to go to the police. So instead, he chose to live in constant terror while repeatedly forking over money to the extortionists. Over time, he ponied up dozens of payments, totaling more than $2.6 million to the nameless thugs, who turned his life into a living nightmare. IRS investigators began unraveling the case when Jessica Tackett was flagged for making a suspicious number of bank deposits, just below $10,000. The amount that requires banks to report a transaction to the agency under federal law. Tackett's banking habits appeared to be deliberately structured to avoid legal scrutiny. And as detectives dug deeper into the case, they uncovered evidence indicating that Tackett and her parents were responsible for the extortion scheme. Prosecutors accused Jessica's father, 52-year-old Terry Tackett, of making threatening phone calls. After discovering that they were under investigation, Terry and his wife, Kimberly, allegedly tried to conceal their assets, which they'd bought using the money they siphoned from Vegnozzi. The criminal couple also told witnesses to lie to the authorities. But in 2015, the couple and their daughter were federally charged with various financial crimes, which could have resulted in lengthy prison sentences. Jessica Tackett was awaiting trial when she passed away six months after the arrests. According to news reports, a lifetime of drug addiction and hard partying had finally taken its toll on the young woman, whose habits caused her body to give out long before her time. Terry Tackett originally faced 119 counts, but took a deal and pleaded guilty to money laundering and tax evasion. He served five years in federal prison and was ordered to pay the IRS more than $606,000 in back taxes on his ill-gotten income. The outcome of Kimberly's case is unclear, but she was facing less serious charges than her husband, so she most likely received a lighter punishment. In the aftermath of the years-long scam, Vagnozzi's lawyer said that his client hopes the case acts as a cautionary tale for other extortion victims. One of his key mistakes was in thinking that the harassment would eventually stop. In hindsight, Vagnozzi realized that he should have gone to the authorities immediately, and he urged anyone who found themselves in a similar situation to do just that. 4. Christina Hensley In August 2010, 35-year-old exotic dancer Christina Hensley was hired to perform for a private party at the home of 31-year-old Jay Cho outside Cincinnati. She later claimed that Cho repeatedly tried to touch her inappropriately, causing her to become uncomfortable and leave. Hensley also accused Cho of jumping in front of her SUV as she sped away in a panic, and she apparently didn't realize that she was dragging him beneath the undercarriage of her vehicle until she stopped at a gas station about a mile away from his home. Sadly, Cho died from his injuries at the scene. Authorities charged Hensley with murder, aggravated robbery, and failure to stop at the scene of an accident. During her trial, her defense attorneys painted a sympathetic picture of a destitute single mother of three, who resorted to stripping as a way to make ends meet in an economy that had nothing else to offer her. On a typical night, she'd sit in her SUV in a parking lot and wait for calls to perform at private parties. Hensley's lawyers also argued that their client didn't mean to harm or kill Cho, and that she'd expressed genuine remorse over the tragedy. The jury nevertheless found her guilty of involuntary manslaughter, and she received the maximum sentence of 10 years in prison, despite her attorney's pleas for probation instead of prison. Hensley served her time and was released but she didn't get to enjoy the free world for very long before her untimely death in 2022 at the age of just 46. The circumstances surrounding her passing are unclear. 3. Brain Basarik 
In early 2019, a savvy internet user traced some disturbing Tumblr posts about plans to commit a mass shooting to a 31-year-old exotic dancer from Florida named Brain Basaric. Posting under the username, Taking Lives, Basaric allegedly said that she wanted to commit a mass shooting in a crowded place and spray bullets into people's faces. Basaric was also accused of expressing her love and support for convicted murderer Dylan Roof, who massacred nine African-American churchgoers during a racist attack in 2015. According to authorities, Basaric made it clear that she was well aware of Roof's crimes and said that she adored him after commenters responded to her views with shock and outrage. When a commenter asked Basaric if she had any plans to act on her violent fantasies, she reportedly told the person that she planned to get an assault rifle soon-ish. After tracing the young woman's posts to the city of Lakeland, the concerned Tumblr user contacted the Polk County Sheriff's Office. An investigation was launched, and Basaric was charged with threatening to kill, do bodily injury, or conduct a mass shooting or an act of terrorism. Records show that Basaric was convicted of written threats to kill or injure, and as a result, she was sentenced to seven years of felony probation and will remain under supervision until 2027. 2. Lenicia Battle a 22-year-old exotic dancer named Lenicia Battle was working at a strip club in Waupaca, Wisconsin, when she became acquainted with a 56-year-old repeat customer from Minnesota named Scott Ross. In December 2016, Ross asked Battle to meet him in Milwaukee for what prosecutors would later describe as a prostitution arrangement. According to a criminal complaint, Battle and her boyfriend, Jesse McCauley, conspired to lure Ross to their home under the guise of a booty call. But in reality, they knew he'd be carrying a large amount of cash and were planning to rob him instead. Battle told Ross to meet her outside the residence, where the suspects attempted to ambush their unsuspecting target while he sat in his car. As soon as Ross realized he'd been set up, he tried driving away, but was shot in the back. He lost control of the car and crashed down the block from where the botched robbery had occurred. Ross died at the scene, and investigators arrested Battle and McCauley, who'd run back into their house after the shooting. During questioning, Battle told investigators that McCauley had killed Ross. She admitted that she knew about the plan to rob the victim, but denied having any knowledge that the crime would possibly involve a shooting. Battle agreed to testify against McCauley in exchange for a reduced attempted armed robbery conviction and a two and a half year prison sentence. But when McCauley's trial rolled around, Battle hesitated to answer questions about things she'd already discussed in detail with the police. And she kept saying that she couldn't remember what had happened on the day of Ross's death. The judge reminded Battle that her reduced conviction and sentence could be revoked if she failed to keep up her end of the deal and the young woman said she was afraid of one of McCulley's friends who'd been at the crime scene on the day of the murder. But she refused to say whether anyone had threatened her safety and reluctantly began to discuss the information she'd provided to police earlier on in the case. McCulley was found guilty of felony murder and was sentenced to 35 years in prison where he'll remain at least until he's in his 60s. And now for number one. But if you want to hear even more stories, stay tuned for some extra content that you might have missed. 1. Rashida Samoa Lilly It's common for people who get paid in cash to lie to the government about their income, but getting caught can come with some serious consequences. A 38-year-old exotic dancer from Minnesota named Rashida Samoa Lilly learned this lesson the hard way in 2018 when she was accused of falsely claiming zero income on her applications for government assistance. The case caught the attention of social services employees in Lesueur County, who noticed that Lily listed her monthly rent as $950, but claimed irregular child support payments as her only form of income. Even with any assistance she received, caseworkers knew it was unlikely that Lily was making ends meet without an additional source of money that she wasn't telling them about. So, after noticing that the woman identified herself as a freelance model on her Facebook page, investigators obtained a warrant to track Lily's vehicle. 
they quickly discovered that she was dancing at a strip club, where she was seen working at least seven shifts over a two-week period. A search of Lily's home produced records showing that she was making about $75 per hour and that she earned over $100,000 in unreported income over a four-year period starting in 2015. In both 2017 and 2018, her annual income was estimated at $41,000, none of which was reported to the government. Detectives also found a leasing contract with a strip club Lily had signed in 2015, which entitled her to take shifts at the business. During that same four-year time span, Lily allegedly received over $19,000 in benefits that she wasn't entitled to, including health care, cash assistance, and food stamps. And as a consequence, she was charged with felony counts of wrongfully obtaining assistance and forgery, and was ordered to return to court at a later date. Number 15. Knockout. In August of 2022 in Bellevue, Washington, a young thief knocked himself out after running into a glass door as he tried to flee a Louis Vuitton store with a handbag worth $18,000. Surveillance footage of the incident was captured by the establishment, showing a group of teenagers grabbing things off of shelves and running for the door, attempting to leave without detection. However, they only bring attention to themselves when one of them seems to overlook the large plate glass window standing between them and freedom. Two female suspects make it out of the store, but one of the thieves smacks into the glass and falls to the ground. Just seconds later, a loss prevention officer detained the 17-year-old, who wasn't alert but was semi-conscious when the Bellevue Police Department arrived. The teen was then arrested but was later released due to one of his family members at the hospital. The thief's name was never released to the public because he's a juvenile, who's allegedly part of a retail crime theft ring. Unfortunately, no other details are available regarding this case, so the teen thief's punishment remains unclear. Number 14. Bribery A Texas woman was charged with bribery in April 2022, after authorities claimed she tried to bribe an officer with sexual favors during her arrest. Mark Herman, Harris County's constable, posted to Facebook regarding the incident, stating that 21-year-old Dulce Ortiz was initially taken into custody for her involvement in a car wreck. Authorities were called to a neighborhood in order to investigate reports of a crash where the driver fled the scene after a vehicle damaged a sign and drove over a flower bed. According to deputies, a man attempted to take responsibility for the wreck, but Ortiz was later identified as the driver after witnesses helped locate her. The young woman eventually returned to the scene of the crime and she was arrested after showing clear signs of intoxication. Constable Herman reported to Live 5 News that the suspect was being transported to jail after she attempted to bribe a male officer with cash and sexual acts in exchange for letting her go. However, nobody took her up on her offer and she was instead booked into the Harris County Jail. Number 13, Child Shield. The world's worst father award goes to a man from British Columbia who brought their three-year-old along as he robbed a gas station even using the child as a shield at one point. This happened in May 2022 in Kamloops, Canada, when a man walked into the store and demanded cash from the clerk behind the counter. He made it clear to the gas station employees that he wasn't messing around by lifting his shirt and revealing what appeared to be a gun. The robbery was quickly reported to authorities though, and an officer that was already in the area conducting a traffic stop spotted the father-son duo leaving the scene. When confronted by the cop, the man allegedly placed his son between him and the policeman, basically using his child as a shield. However, moments later, the 32-year-old suspect released the toddler to another family member and was then taken into custody after a brief struggle. In the end, the thief's gun turned out to be fake and he was handed a slew of charges related to the incident, including uttering threats, robbery, resisting arrest, and breach of firearms prohibition. Number 12. Alcohol Sales Have Ended In 2018, a Florida man stole two cases of Bud Light after discovering he couldn't buy alcohol from a gas station at 2.30 a.m. 33-year-old Christopher Maxwell was consequently charged with two counts of battery on a law enforcement officer, petty theft, and violently resisting arrest. After entering a speedway, a cashier informed the man that alcohol sales were only permitted between 7 a.m. and 1 a.m. This enraged Maxwell, so he straight up asked her, what would happen if I stole some beer? 
The cashier explained that she'd call 911, but Maxwell didn't care and grabbed two 18 packs of Bud Light and left the gas station on foot without paying. The thief didn't make it far, though, and encountered the police just a quarter mile away, still carrying a case of beer in each of his hands. When officers ordered him to stop walking, he refused and instead snatched one of the cop's shoulder radios and then attempted to punch him. However, the officer easily dodged his fist and took Maxwell to the ground before handcuffing him. The thief was later booked into the Indian River County Jail with his bail set at $16,000. Number 11. That's not cocaine. Five teens robbed a house in Marion County, Florida in 2010 in hopes of scoring some drugs, but what they thought was cocaine turned out to be the cremated remains of the homeowner's father and their two deceased Great Danes. The victim returned to her home in Silver Spring Shores only to discover that several of her possessions were missing, including jewelry and electronics. But the most unfortunate of all was the missing ashes of her father and beloved dogs. Police were called to investigate the matter and eventually found out that the five suspects had snorted the ashes, believing it to be cocaine or heroin. However, once they realized the cremated remains weren't party drugs, they ditched them. Luckily, the police were later able to recover the ashes for the victim. Involved in the crime were 18-year-old Matrix Andalus, 19-year-old Waldo Sorora, and Jose David Diaz Marrero, and two other accomplices who were underage at the time of the robbery. Diaz Marrero received eight years in prison, and Andalus was handed nine years with 12 years of probation, but Sorora's sentencing remains unclear. Number 10, Biker Gang. A pair of Australian robbers couldn't have picked a worse target in 2008 when they decided to rob a bar in Sydney. The criminals' names were never released to the public, but they apparently walked into the pub wearing ski masks and were armed with machetes. Little did they know that the bar was full of about 50 bikers who had just begun a club meeting in another room of the establishment. Once the bikers caught wind of what was happening, they jumped in to intervene. Members of the Southern Cross Cruiser Biker Club were captured on surveillance footage, chasing the robbers with tables and chairs hoisted over their heads. The club's president, who is only known as Jester, told CBS News that one of the suspects leapt over a balcony to escape, while the other robber tried to flee through a service entrance, but was subdued by several club patrons before he could leave. There was also apparently a getaway driver parked outside the bar, but they were forced to flee when several angry bikers started pelting the vehicle with glass bottles and various other objects. The suspect that managed to escape was captured nearby, and the robber that club patrons detained was taken to the hospital for minor injuries he sustained. Unfortunately, the outcome of the case is unclear. Number 9. Facebook Brag Facebook isn't the best place to brag about criminal intentions, but that didn't stop a British man, Andrew Hennels, from boasting about his plans to raid a Tesco in early 2015. The 32-year-old posted a hardly cryptic message to his profile on February 13th that read, Doing Tesco, over. According to Sergeant Pete Jessup, it was a truly bizarre and unusual case, as just 15 minutes after updating his Facebook account, Hennels was apprehended in the Gaywood area of Kings Lynn in Norfolk. The man had in his possession a knife and 410 British pounds that he'd just stolen from the supermarket. A bystander reported seeing Hennels with a knife demanding money from a cashier at the Tesco located on St. Faith's Drive. The criminal apparently stole a car from an elderly couple who stopped to use the ATM and then fled to a pub nearby. Hennels' post on social media helped the police secure a guilty plea from the man, which was entered in March of that same year. He was labeled as a high risk who would do serious harm to the public by Judge Anthony Bate, so he consequently spent four years on an extended license after he was released from jail as part of his sentence. Number 8. Snapchat Catches Criminal 24-year-old Christopher Wallace was wanted by law enforcement in Somerset County, Maine in early 2015 for stealing a wood stove from a sporting camp earlier that same year. Most criminals shy away from bragging about their crimes, but Wallace isn't like most criminals. He felt the need to post about the theft on Snapchat, even telling his friends exactly where he was in Fairfield. This, of course, led to someone on his friends list tipping off the police, who later arrived at his location to conduct a search of the residence. However, when they showed up, Wallace was nowhere to be found. And while it's common knowledge not to give away your hiding spot when you're attempting to evade arrest, Wallace did it anyway by telling his Snapchat friends that he was hiding in a cabinet in the house. 
Not only was Wallace arrested in the end, but so was 20-year-old Erica Hall, who hindered the police investigation by claiming that nobody else was inside the home with her. Number 7. Car Thief a man who was accused of stealing a car in Charlotte, North Carolina couldn't resist another vehicular theft when he bonded out of jail in late 2022. 29-year-old Anthony Deshaun Goddard posted his $3,000 bail after getting arrested on December 29, 2022. According to Charlotte's bail bond agent, Nymea Cropper, her car was stolen after she entered the Mecklenburg County Jail on December 30th to post bail for one of her clients. Afterward, Cropper accused Goddard of the crime. As a result, he was hit with a slew of charges, including reckless driving, possession of stolen goods, resisting an officer, operating a vehicle without an operator's license, and speeding. Goddard had been released from jail less than 24 hours before he committed another senseless crime, earning him the nickname, the dumbest criminal in the city. Surveillance video showed Goddard breaking into Cropper's vehicle and driving away based on reports from local news station WSOC. At the moment, it seems as though Goddard has remained at large and Cropper's car is still missing. Hopefully, though, the criminal will be brought to justice sometime soon. Number 6. The Drug Dealer In 2011, a man was arrested in Vancouver, Canada, after police searched his cell phone and discovered that he named himself Jason Pauche Drug Dealer on the device. Law enforcement was searching the man's home in connection to another crime, but he wasn't the initial target of the investigation. It wasn't until they looked at the phone they'd confiscated from him that he was charged with drug trafficking. The 24-year-old and his girlfriend, Clarissa Prosper, were both also hit with possession of proceeds from a crime after the police found marijuana and more than $5,000 in the bedroom the couple shared in the house. Jason ended up pleading guilty to all the charges brought against him, and he was given a conditional one year behind bars. Clarissa's sentencing, unfortunately, remains unclear. Number 5. Stick Shift In 2014, an armed teenager from Omaha, Nebraska, attempted to steal a vehicle. However, after ordering a woman and her child out of the car, he realized it was a stick shift. The 17-year-old had no idea how to drive a manual, which ultimately resulted in his arrest. After trying for 15 minutes to flee the scene in the Dodge Caliber, the teen was arrested after attempting to escape on foot. As the young man tried to run away, he apparently threw his gun, possibly as a way to avoid an additional firearms charge. Luckily, nobody was hurt during the ordeal, but because of the severity of his actions, the 17-year-old was charged as an adult for the robbery. In the end, he was sentenced to 8 to 14 years in prison. Number 4. Man Brings a Knife to a Gunfight a man from Texas who was armed with a knife was fatally shot in 2022 after trying to rob a Houston gun store. The suspect was killed after an employee of the store called Carter's Country defended himself with a firearm. Apparently, before entering the establishment, the suspect went into the suit mart next door to try and steal some merchandise. The thief looked homeless, according to a witness, who said he was told to let a pair of jeans go or the staff of the suit mart would call the police. He listened to the command that was given to him and then made his way into Carter's country. He reportedly entered the gun store armed with a sharp object and then opened the cash register and helped himself to some money. Immediately afterward, an employee shot the man in self-defense. The criminal managed to stumble out into the parking lot but eventually collapsed. When law enforcement arrived, he was taken to the hospital in critical condition where he later passed away. This story just goes to show that you can't bring a knife into a gun store and expect to get away with it, especially not in Texas. Number 3. Money Trail A thief robbed a 7-Eleven in Skokie, Illinois in broad daylight in January 2023. Typically in these scenarios, a criminal would have a getaway car parked outside, but in this case, the suspect decided to flee on foot. The man's escape route included a busy golf course, but he made it through without being hit by a single ball. He thought he'd gotten away with the crime, but little did he know that he'd left a trail of money behind him, allowing officers to easily locate and arrest him. The suspect's name was never released, which is probably a good thing, because he'd likely never live this incident down. Number 2. Getaway Car In early 2023, a video was captured in Chicago of a suspected vehicle thief holding onto the hood of his getaway car as he attempted to run from police. The incident occurred along Locust Street, where an alleged carjacking crew was seen trying to steal a parked Jeep. 
However, when the authorities arrived, some of the suspects jumped into a gray Buick and took off, while others that were involved fled on foot. One of the criminals that was being chased by officers turned a corner and jumped on the hood of the getaway car. He then demanded that the driver start going. As the white getaway car took off down the street, the carjacker still clung to the hood. Officers tried to stop the vehicle from leaving, but in the process, a Chicago police sergeant was hit but wasn't injured. Unfortunately, the thieves managed to get away. There haven't been any arrests in connection to the crime yet, but an investigation is ongoing. Number 1. Drunk Driver Blames Dog It's not unlikely for someone to pin a crime on someone else, but it's pretty uncommon to hear someone blaming their dog for crashing their car into a ditch. 26-year-old Relaford Cooper III was accused of driving under the influence in Florida in late 2015, resulting in high-speed chases between him and law enforcement. However, when he lost control of the car and steered into a ditch, he told officers that his dog had been the one driving, not him. Cooper fled on foot after wrecking his vehicle, taking refuge in a nearby church, but he was quickly found by the authorities after being traced by sniffer dogs. He apparently told them, my dog was driving that car, I ran because I wanted to. You ain't gonna find no drugs or guns on me. And while he may not have had any illegal substances on him at the time, he reportedly smelled of marijuana and alcohol when he was apprehended. Cooper might have suffered a concussion from the car crash as he threw up after being discovered by police, so he was taken to the hospital for a checkup before getting charged with a slew of crimes, including aggravated fleeing, leaving the scene of an accident, and drunk driving. Unfortunately, no further updates were released regarding the case, so Cooper's sentencing remains unclear. If you visited a club and suspected the employees of robbing extremely drunk customers, what would you do? Would you tell the bouncer, call the police, stay out of it altogether, or maybe handle it some other way? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.